Garrett Fox and good friend of uh, America's News. Good to see you this morning. Good, good to be with that. you, Martha. And Bill, with his wisecracks over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good for them. Can they, can they do this? Yes. You know, this is an interesting area of law enforcement. Everybody in law enforcement and the judiciary takes the same oath. I took the oath. It's to uphold the Constitution of the United States. Implicit in that oath is a judgment that each individual makes. Is this order that my superiors have given me? Is this request that my colleagues have asked of me? Is this application that lawyers have made before me consistent with the Constitution? Normally, there is tremendous cooperation between state and local law enforcement on one hand and the feds on the other. And, and that's for a variety of reasons. They help each other. Sometimes the state has to call in the feds and the feds have something the states don't, a big fat checkbook. So the feds fund a lot of local law enforcement. But occasionally the feds will ask state and local law enforcement to do something they don't want to do. It might be against local law or a state law. For example, in Colorado and in the state of Washington today, local law enforcement cannot enforce federal laws against marijuana because marijuana is permissible under state law. That's a direct clash, a direct conflict. In this particular case with this uh, sheriff, he is, I think, accurately anticipating that the president will seek legislation and sign executive orders that will infringe upon the right to keep and bear arms. Is it a crime for him to refuse to cooperate with the feds? Absolutely not. Does he have the discretion, the lawful ability to refuse to cooperate with the feds? Yes, he does. This is actually a growing movement throughout the country. Local and state law enforcement saying to the feds, those are your laws, you enforce them. There, it was, it, it's fascinating. I mean, when you look at an executive order, I think most people would assume that that's an executive order, that that has to be carried out across all levels of law enforcement in the country. But let's talk about it on a practical matter in terms of how it might manifest itself, because we are expecting that the president will put in this proposal uh, limits on multiple clips, limits on certain kinds of uh, weapons, uh, well, those, automatic okay. weapons. Can, how will that manifest itself in, in terms okay. of how these... Those <laughs> limitations, like on the size of the weapons, the power of the weapons, the, the amount of bullets that a clip can hold, can only be legislated by the Congress. The president can't do that. And the president's executive orders can only apply to people that work for him, employees of the federal government. Uh, Harry Truman, when he became president, was scandalized to learn that the federal government was segregated. The military and the civilian workforce. With an executive order, he stopped the segregation by race. The president has the power to do that. Could he have desegregated state governments? No, he didn't have the authority. Now the president does because of civil rights laws happily enacted since then. So the president of the United States cannot tell a local sheriff, a local police officer, a state attorney general what to do. He can only tell federal law enforcement what to do. But that's a big stick because they sometimes show up with a checkbook, and that's a great inducement to comply with what the feds want when they're going to let you hire X number more police and they're going to pay for it. Where this goes, I don't know. Her strings are very powerful. Her strings are very powerful. I commend, I applaud local law enforcement when they say to the feds, don't, 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 don't come here. This is our problem and we'll deal with it. The Constitution means what it says right here. Fascinating constitutional debate, and I know that you're somewhat interested yes. in those. Uh, Judge, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm hung up on this Constitution thing. We love that about you. Right. Right. Um, um, thank you, Judge. Follow up on this. We will not get us in a moment here. Within the hour, you'll see the President of the White House live along with the Vice President. Also, you will see this must-see video of the dog with some sticky paws. Caught in the act, too.